Welcome everyone to this week's video. Today we are on Herp Monday number 34 and we have a good one for you today. This is an animal that is, um, I, you just gotta see it to believe it. Today we are going to be talking about the, damn, the cricket glass frog or plantation glass frog or the bare-hearted glass frog. Um, so bare-hearted glass frog, Hyla Lino Batrachium Columba Columbophyllum. Okay. <laughs> Let me say that again. Hyla Lino Batrachium Columbo Columbophyllum. Ooh, that's a mouthful. <laughs> um, it is part of the family Centrolinidae, which is the family of glass frogs. And we'll get into what is a glass frog in just a little bit. But in the Hyalinobatrachium, the genus that this is part of, the, every frog in this genus has a pretty bulbous liver covered in white pigment, and there's a lack of a humeral spine in adult them. So a spine in their humerus. And I know that we're just already starting out scientific, but I promise you. Um, as I said, this is plantation glass frog is another one of its common names that is because it's found in honduras costa rica panama and colombia and apparently it has been found very commonly in plantation um it is found right beside or directly over streams or body of water surrounded by rainforests so i'm guessing you know streams people have streams and rivers running through their plantations and that's why it's called a plantation glass frog but not entirely sure, but it is very, very apparent that they must have a body of water um, around them. And they are, if you can tell by their color, they're definitely adapted for being in the rainforest. Um, the, in fact, kind of on where else you would find these frogs, the Costa Rican Amphibian Research Center found that they live higher in trees or near waterfalls while not in feeding season. But they do seem to migrate sort of up in the trees or well, they'll be near waterfalls when they're not breeding um, and then they'll migrate down and lower and in a little more stiller water. And that's why we'll get into that. Now these are a very, very small frog, very small. Um, males are only about 22 to 27 millimeters, which that's about 0 0.87 to 1.06 inches. So essentially, if it's over an inch, it's a big, big individual. Usually you're going to find below that. Or conversely, females are 24 and a half to 29 millimeters, which Females are 24 and a half to 29 millimeters. They're, so they're at 0 0.96 to 1.14 inches. So if you find one that's over an inch, it is either a abnormally huge male or it's a female. More than likely, it's going to be a female. But as you can tell from this picture, they do have very green backs. And it's kind of hard to see, but they do have these yellow spots all throughout their the back their body it's little tiny yellow spots um and i know there's something else yellow that we're going to be looking at don't worry <laughs> um but why are they called a glass frog well if you have not heard it should be pretty obvious as soon as i show you this picture bam so glass frogs have a very transparent um parietal peritone peritoneum basically belly skin so their bellies are completely see-through. Um, this is found on most glass frogs. The reason why I chose the bare-hearted is because this has the clearest of any species. So you can see right there, that's the heart. We're going into like liver and kidneys and intestines. That's the nerve. Um, I believe that's the gallbladder producing bile. But I mean, you can just see it all right. It's insane. When you think about it really really neat um but back to the front 
it has very forward facing um really yellow eyes um almost golden it's hard to see but their nostrils are also very front facing um, in terms of their feet, their front fingers are much less webbed than their back feet. Um, so front feet, much less webbed than back feet. That really helps them to have mobility in both the trees and water in case they fall or, you know, whenever they have to swim around. Those uh, non-webbed front fingers really allow them to grip any trees or leaves, especially, versus there. Um, these do pretty much resemble a tree frog. So breeding, breeding happens during rainy season. And what will happen is that a male will find a leaf, that will be the leaf that he decides to fall from. And the reason why, if you remember, I said one of the common names is the cricket glass frog. Well, the reason why is because the male's um, fall during breeding season is actually very similar to a cricket. Um, extremely similar, actually. And the one thing that is for certain is that they must pick a leaf that is directly over water. We'll get into that in a little. Now, the male will stay on that one leaf calling. Maybe go to a next leaf, but it will he will basically stay in just one spot and will fight any other males that will try to take their leaf. And the winner wins the fight by basically taking his hand uh, foot and just smashing him into the leaf and holding him down until he submits. And then the loser wanders off and the winner gets to keep his leaf. Um, but then the female will lay eggs on the underside of the leaf. This is a picture from Wanji Abarka. Um, really neat picture, really neat picture. But this is the underside of a leaf that I guess he turned it over to get a good picture. And the female will lay these eggs, and these look a little more developed than freshly laid eggs, but then the male will stay while the female leaves. The eggs are actually cared for by the male. And the male actually not only has to care for them, he actually, and defend them from like predators and things like that, he actually has to keep them moist. And it seems to be that how he does this is by um, urination. Basically, I think believe what happens is he doesn't process the water very well and just straddles the eggs and, phys and physically urinates on them to cause them to get extra moisture because you got to think the underside of a leaf is probably not going to have as much now because these are a nocturnal frog the males actually only guard the eggs at night during the day they will scurry away into some bush or into a bark trying to hide and that is when their eggs are heavily predated on and the eggs are predated on by wasp diurnal wasp um the wasp will come they will pick one egg out of at a time off a leaf however they'll they'll keep coming back and there's sometimes there's been many instances apparently of where they will lose an entire batch of but after all this, if the eggs do survive, these very small tadpoles will hatch and fall into the water. That is why it has to be directly over water. And those very small tadpoles are very brown, very different coloration than the, and they're, uh, than the other frogs. And it's they're less than 9.5 millimeters, which is about 0 0.4 inches. They're very, very tiny, but when you think about it, not you'd think that they would be significantly smaller compared to their adult size which is only another half an inch basically bigger that bowl. now the interesting fact that we're going to do this um one of the biggest concerns for amphibians across the world is actually global warming it's a huge threat to all frogs especially frogs in rainforest and it's a particular threat to these bare-hearted glass frogs um, they must, they need moisture and rain in order to not dry out. I believe one of the reasons why their um, skin is so thin on their stomach is that they actually absorb, mo absorb moisture through their skin. That's a large way on how they did it. I don't know about that, but I, I seem to remember hearing that. 
So anyway, lack of rain or warmer conditions that dry out these frogs can be exceedingly dangerous for the bare hearted frog. Very quickly um, will these dry out. So biologists are actually interested in further researching and observing bare hearted glass frogs because they seem to be extremely good bio indicators of how global warming is affecting um, the rainforest. Basically what a bio indicator is, is it's an, a species of animal that scientists can look at and they can say, hey, they are doing very well. Things must be doing okay in this part of the rainforest or things are going bad, something is happening. Um, another threat to these is actually deforestation. I should have said that. But it is real. the most interesting fact is how the scientists are looking at these specifically related to global warming. But thank you guys so much again. I really appreciate it. I hope to see you again. If I don't, please be safe. Have a great day. Please leave a like, comment, and subscribe if you do. Really appreciate it. Go check our other series, Fish Friday. And I hope to see you again. And